what's interesting is we are already a very service-oriented um, country in the sense that we understand what service means. And what it means is that when you're not only manufacturing, once you manufacture the product, you also then say, this product is going to go to a consumer and I'm going to also service, provide service within that product and take back as well. And then, re then it's like a leasing mechanism where they come back and they return the product and then you give them another product, maybe at a reduced cost and, or reduced price. And that becomes a system by which you keep your customers Customers, and also basically close the loop for the, the cycle. And so uh, the life cycle uh, um, analysis actually can be implemented into you what you're doing. And also you can get more customers by word of mouth and then also think about how you're making your product because you're taking it back, therefore you want to take it apart so you're going to be much more careful in your decision-making process. When you decide what kind of service you want to provide, you may actually have to network with other organizations. So if you want, say, loyalty points, you may want to network with a loyalty point company to get the links and find, figuring out what the interests of consumers are. So this is what's really interesting. It creates um, sort of a dynamic where you're looking at other organizations to partner with, to champion certain ideas. And I think this is what they're going to see is that IT companies are going to think about what are the social networks I can get involved in or the business social networks I can get involved in to actually you capture more of the market and be able to provide a service that someone else does not provide. Some companies are moving more to service, uh, particularly those companies that are commoditizing. Um, as you commoditize, you begin to realize service is your next opportunity. With Nokia, that means application and support. It means making that device more important to you. How that rolls into sustainability is a big thing for us because if I can influence some of that one billion user base with an application that helps them to make a more sustainable choice in what they do, then I can make a huge impact. I would say that there is an understanding that's being developed today that I think more and more CEOs, more C-level employees and, and businesses in general are realizing that the idea that sustainability in terms of environment versus sustainability in finance uh, and the success of your business are not mutually exclusive. They're not even mutually agreed. They're mutually dependent upon one another. That plays into the way we do business in that it is now treated like business. And what we do in environment and, and sustainability, the choices we make are treated like business choices. Um, we build business cases to do, to do the various things that we do. Um, now, not a business case doesn't always mean that you're going to produce um, a tangible bottom line result from this. You may have some intangible value built into it, and I think the recognition of that is starting to be a big piece of it.